Okay, great. Here we are. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. Um, we're having this very interesting and exciting conference here at the OECD this week. And um, it's about artificial intelligence, intelligent machines, smart policies. And I've dragged two of our stars out of the <laughs> conference to uh, talk with you, to talk with you. And so we hope that you'll send in your questions um, as, as time goes on here. I'm Doug France. I'm the Deputy Secretary General at the OECD. And to my immediate left is Dr. Joanna Bryson from Bath University. And on the other end is Dr. Susumu Hirano from Chuo University in Tokyo. And I'm going to start off with a really easy question. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about artificial intelligence here at this conference, and Elon Musk has compared artificial intelligence to summoning, summoning the devil. Stephen Hawking has warned that it might spell the end of the human race. And Bill Gates said AI is potentially more dangerous than a nuclear capacity. On the other side of that equation is Mark Zuckerberg, who says there's very little to worry about. And the analogy that Zuckerberg has made is it's like flying an airplane. We didn't have all the rules in place we, before we flew an airplane. Now, I'm not sure, frankly, that that's a great analogy if he thinks about it. But what I want to ask my two fellows here is, who's right? Should we be scared to death or should we embrace this? And Joanna, I'll start with you, please. I'm, 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 I'm going to say it. Uh, I think Musk is right. It's exactly like summoning a devil. No, it's like a lot worse than that. It's not actually a not event where nothing's going to happen, <laughs> but it's but it's not deadly. Um, I well, uh, the the airplanes or cars are actually a better metaphor. We you know thirty thousand people a year are killed in America. I think I don't know how many worldwide. Two hundred thousand, two million. I, I remember it too. Uh, <laughs> But so new technology is a threat, and I think sometimes we just ignore the fact that lots and lots of people have been killed by cars because we think that what's happened for our economy matters more than their lives. And that is a hard decision, but um, I don't think artificial intelligence is going, in fact, the only way that I could think of artificial intelligence being an existential threat for humans is if it resulted in uh, an increased nuclear threat. So I think it's extremely ironic that uh, a physicist <laughs> says the AI people are creating a problem, <laughs> but yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, Susumu, how do you respond? I think both are right. I mean, uh, it's a future technology, so we cannot foresee anything. So we have to be concerned. But at the same time, we should uh, utilize this kind of new technology. And so, uh, Zuckerberg son said that uh, it's like an airplane. Before, uh, yeah. you know, there there were no rules or laws. Yes. I'd like to uh, use another, another how can I say, you know, hypo. It's a kind of a time machine, you know. If we can build time machine now, there is no law. But we should behave, you know, uh, reasonably by, by using ethics on something like that. Mm -hmm. And we have to use it more, how can I say, wisely so that we cannot change the history or something like that. So we, are, we must be concerned about the possible dangerousness of this kind of new technology. But at the same time, we, we should utilize, we should build, build more, you know, uh, we, uh, no, better life for yeah. the all yeah. of the people. Yeah. Sure. I, I, don't think, I don't think any sensible person disagrees with the idea that AI can make our lives better, is in fact today Already. making our lives better in, in demonstrable ways, mm -hmm. really in demonstrable ways. Mm -hmm. And the promise is enormous. I think sometimes the promise is overhyped a little bit, <laughs> but, but the promise is enormous and nobody wants to stop that. But the question still is, don't we, do we need guidelines? Do we need uh, some sort of a framework? to make sure that we take advantage of the promise, but we also protect and have safeguards against the perils of artificial intelligence. And, and Susumo, you are, are the dean and of the graduate school at your university. And more importantly for this conversation, you were the chair of the committee mm -hmm. in Japan mm -hmm. that drafted mm -hmm. some very important guidelines for promoting AI. And, you know, I will say just to plug Japan here that that Japan's involvement in this issue, their, their leadership, has been enormously valuable, particularly when you have an advanced technological country like Japan, a G7 member, 
that gets behind the idea that you need some guidelines. So perhaps you could just explain a little bit about the guidelines and how they were developed, and, and then we'll, we'll decide if they're really good or not. Yeah. Actually, it's, uh, it's made, I mean, uh, the conference made the, the, the draft. And members of the conference uh, are from various fields, um, uh, representing, for example, corporations, Google, uh, IBM, and Microsoft, and so on. And uh, uh, consumer representatives also included in, in, the, in, the, in the conference, and uh, academics like me participated in the conference. So w our purpose is to make a um, consensus and uh, make uh, balanced guidelines based upon multiple stakeholders. And uh, we would like to keep the balance so it's not, uh, how can I say, binding hurdle. But we call it soft law, which means that non-binding. So because uh, the, the, the technology of AI is still in, uh, in a development phase, not yet has developed. And so we don't want to stop the development. But at the same time, we have to be careful about the future uh, dystopia or something like that. So we prepared. It's a kind of a common sense principles. I think so. Yeah. 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 I mean, does, do common sense principles go far enough? Is that, is that really the answer here? Um, well, actually, as uh, an academic working in a G7 company, country myself, uh, the United Kingdom, we had a similar committee. Uh, we didn't have Google and Facebook there, but we did have members of the robotics uh, industry there um, and the military, which is uh, one of uh, Britain's leading uh, <laughs> uh, uh, economies. And in 2010, we put together something called the Principles of Robotics. And so we, they're also soft bonding. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that we keep working and improving these and bringing in more stakeholders. But I think the British showed a lot of foresight. Mm -hmm. And so these were published in 2011. They're called the EPSRC Principles of Robotics. The first three update um, Asimov's laws. A lot of people mm -hmm. think Asimov's laws would solve all the problems. But in fact, they're computationally intractable. That means you can't. A robot can't possibly know uh, how, whether its actions are going to hurt a human, for example. That, that's just intractable, as we just described about. The people who invented cars didn't mean to kill 30,000 people a year, yeah. right? But secondly, Asimov's laws make the responsibility of the robot. And uh, this community, which included lawyers and government and everything, said, no, responsibility needs to lie with the humans. And so the, the first three of five principles explain how um, the people who manufacture robots are responsible for roughly the same things as Asimov's laws. And then the second two of the five laws explain that the users that purchase the robots then become responsible as well. They need to have, so if, if you fly your drone into a building, whose dr drone it is needs to be uh, licensed, just right. like an automobile. Right. So um, do these go far enough? Um, well, first of all, I wouldn't say so uh, just on their own, but there are other things going on. We are already governed by law in terms of uh, producing safe products. And I think one of the really important things to understand about artificial intelligence is it is just a product. Don't let the word intelligence make you think mm. it's human or magic or something. We still have the same responsibilities we had before. Secondly, uh, some people say nobody's working on AI safety. This is absolute rubbish. Artificial intelligence is a part of computer science. Computer science has a couple of disciplines. Uh, uh, software engineering is entirely about building systems that work. Mm -hmm. And uh, security, security engineering is about building safe systems. So there are thousands of people working to make sure that all ICT is safe. Yeah. Having said that, I think we can look at what's happening right now, look at what's happening in the world, and um, realize that ICT has changed the world, like electricity changed the world. Mm -hmm. And so it may very well be that we need some more expertise and some more centralization and discussion, especially about transnational issues, mm -hmm. because the internet is, is almost global, you know, except for the firewall. So we have two uh, examples. And on both sides of the Great Firewall of China, mm -hmm. um, uh, all the money is flowing into the tech industry. It surpassed manufacturing yeah. and, and petrochemical. So I think we have, it's good that we have uh, actually two, two internets to examine and to try to find uh, good rules for yeah. governing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you mentioned cross-border, and, and certainly that's one of the...